You're listening to the Chronicles of Aguna, the Arsenal podcast. I'm Martin Tyler, and you're listening to Harry Simeon. Welcome back to the Chronicles of Aguna, the Arsenal YouTube channel and podcast. Hope you're all well. Uh, North London derby this weekend. Huge game coming up between the Gunners and Tottenham Hotspur at the Emirates Stadium. Absolutely buzzing about this one. Always am in the lead up to the North London derby. I'm, I'm buzzing until the last few days and then that buzz turns into nerves. I uh, haven't quite hit the nerves stage yet, but I think that's because Arsenal go into this one in really, really fine form. And Tottenham go into this in, in rather disappointing form, you've got to be honest. But going to bring you guys a short bite-sized preview here. Going to be talking a little bit about what the North London derby means to me. Going to be talking a little bit about how I think this one is going to go. And of course, uh, handing you guys my prediction at the end of the show as well. So starting off, what does the North London derby mean to me? Everything. It means absolutely everything. It's the biggest game of our season. Never used to be, mind you. And I'll come on to talk a little bit about that in a few moments but why does it mean so much well I guess living in North London we are surrounded by them they're everywhere everywhere you turn uh, I know loads of them <laughs> loads of them give me stick give me criticism when Arsenal aren't necessarily performing and likewise I do the same back so um, it, the banter the uh, the kind of the bragging rights are a massive, massive part of it, but also because Tottenham are a side that in recent seasons we've been challenging with uh, for the European places. You know, neither side are exactly where they want to be. Arsenal have, you know, massively fallen from grace over the last decade or so. Tottenham Hotspur have been going in the opposite direction, you have to say. They've been a much better outfit. They've qualified for Europe far more regularly and they will tell you that they nearly won the Premier League, although... Somehow they managed to finish third in a two-horse race. But anyway, um, yeah, look, it's, it's, it's one of those games that just means the world because of, of the close proximity of the two clubs, because of the fact that we're all ingrained with each other day to day. And of course, because of the history of it, there's a massive, massive deep history to this derby. But for me, has it always been the biggest game of the season? Has it always been the first game I look out for on the calendar? And if I'm being completely honest, no, it hasn't been. In years gone by, Let's be honest, Arsenal had bigger fish to fry, and that's not me being arrogant. It's not even me mocking Spurs. It's just the way it's, it, it was, you know. Arsenal were challenging for the Premier League title, going toe-to-toe -to -toe with Sir Alex Ferguson's Manchester United season after season, and Tottenham were just never in the picture. It was one of those games where it would be maybe the second one I looked out for in the calendar and one that we always enjoyed, one that we always had a lot of success in, Um one that had that animosity and tribalism that you associate with a derby, which was obviously great, but it was never a massive, massive concern. But as the years have gone by and the gap between the two clubs has, has closed quite dramatically, then obviously the game takes a greater significance in the, in the eyes of us as Arsenal fans. I think if you asked Tottenham fans 10 years ago what was their biggest game of the season, they'd have probably told you, yeah, you know, the North London derby. But for us, it's a, it's been a little bit different. And... Um, you know, maybe 10 years is a bit generous. Maybe it's a bit longer than that. But, you know, for us now, this this game, as I say, has that added significance because of the fact that we're both fighting for the same places, the same things, European qualification, probably the domestic cups, etc., etc. And we basically stand in each other's way. So add that to all the history and all the tribalism and all the everything that's gone on over the years, then this derby has actually, in my opinion, improved as a derby. I still think it's one of the best ones in the Premier League, not just because of that history that I talk about, but because of how closely matched the two sides are. Uh, you know, you could argue the Manchester derby is up there now, but for example, take the Merseyside derby that people talk a lot about. Liverpool have just been head and shoulders above Everton for so long now that that derby just kind of loses a little bit of significance, you know, maybe not to those sets of supporters, but in terms of to the onlookers and to those watching from a neutral perspective. But the North London derby to me feels like the kind of game that neutrals love and, and neutrals can't wait to see, which is obviously uh, a great thing. I talked a lot about Arsenal going kind of toe-to-toe -to -toe with Manchester United and why that was the game for me at that point in my life when I was growing up as a youngster. That was the game that I always looked out for. And it was because, quite frankly, without being disrespectful, Tottenham were irrelevant. But... 
that's changed and you have to say you have to give them credit as much as it pains me to do so they have really pushed forward as a club I think Maurizio Pochettino really took them to a new level they've got the likes of Harry Kane Hume Min Son two top top players that are capable of hurting anybody and while I'm not going into this particular derby fearful of Tottenham I do think that they've got the players and the capability of hurting you if you're not at the races. So Arsenal will need to be at their best. Arsenal will need to be professional. The fact that we're at home is obviously huge and is a huge advantage. But the downside to being at home is that if you do get beat, I feel like it hurts that much more. Um, I know you never want to lose a North London derby. I'm not saying that for a second. But when you lose the home one, I find that a lot harder to recover from. So uh, fingers crossed uh, we get all three points and we don't have to worry about that over the next few days. What's my favourite North London derby memory is a question that I've been asked quite a bit in the last few days. And for me, it's winning the title at White Hart Lane. I mean, it doesn't get much better than that. Picking up the Premier League crown on the turf of your biggest rivals, um, you know, your local rivals, a team whose supporters you're going to come across in day-to-day life every five minutes in North London. It's That was just an incredible feeling. And to think that Arsenal have won the league at White Hart Lane twice, which is the same amount of times that Tottenham have won it in their history, is quite an incredible stat. And it shows the golfing class between the two clubs um, over the last few decades. So, yeah, you know, that's got to be the standout memory. But there have been others. You know, the 5-2 wins were, were very enjoyable. The 5-4 at White Hart Lane was very enjoyable. There's been lots and lots of uh, real positive memories from this derby for uh, for us as Arsenal fans. And uh, it, it's why we uh, enjoy it, I guess, or, or have enjoyed it in years gone by. My worst memory, uh, another question that I've been asked is, uh, of course... It's got to be that 5-1 cup defeat. That really, really hurt. And I was at that game and I never thought I was going to it until right at the last minute when somebody popped up with a spare ticket. So I went from the high of, yes, I'm going to Tottenham away right at the last minute to the low of losing 5-1. But, you know, people have told me that it was a, you know, it's a League Cup game and, and I shouldn't probably hold on to it so much and shouldn't let it affect me or get bogged down by it. But to go there and to see Arsenal get beaten by their biggest rivals or their local rivals by five goals to one was really difficult to take but closely behind that actually was that 4-4 draw at the Emirates Stadium that was a real tough one to take as well felt like Arsenal should have been away and um and to see us pegged back the way we were um is 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 a horrible thing and and you know what that was the last time I sat in the clock end at the Emirates Stadium and I've vowed I'll never sit there again after that it's a curse it has to be So how do I think this North London derby is going to go? Well, it's a really difficult one to call because both sides have shown glimpses of sort of what they can do this season while showing their deficiencies as well. And for Arsenal, it's been one way. You know, it's been a really poor start to the season due to some factors that were out of our control, some that were, and then we've improved and we've picked it up. And for Tottenham, it's been the other way around where they started the season really well in terms of results maybe not in terms of performances and now they're the ones going through a little bit of a rough patch and a little bit of a dip so that old cliche of form goes out of the window for the derby I think is true to a degree but I think it is a factor going into this game so I think that Arsenal will be going into it obviously with greater confidence now there's a few selection headaches for Mikel Arteta because the club have announced today that everybody in the first team squad is fit which is fantastic news but what does that mean for for example the midfield Who comes in? Will Granit Xhaka walk straight back into the team after his suspension? I know a lot of people don't want to see that, myself included. But I wouldn't be surprised if Mikel gave the Swiss international the nod because he seems to have a very good relationship with him and he really, really does trust him, whether we do as a fan base or not. Then you've got the issue up front. Alexander Lacazette came in midweek, scored a goal. But did he do enough to force his way into Mikel Arteta's starting eleven for this Sunday? I'm not so sure. I think that Pierre-Emerick Aubameyang will be the man to lead the line, and rightly so. Then you've got the wide positions. Will Nicola Pepe come in? Will Bukayo Saka come in? And then what does that mean for Emil Smith-Rowe and Martin Odegaard? Probably only going to see one of them in the starting lineup if indeed Xhaka comes in. So yeah, it's, there's a lot of decisions for Mikel to make, and, and I'm really intrigued by what he's going to do. Um, What can we expect from Tottenham? I'm no expert on Tottenham, but I do expect them to come and sit deep. I do expect them to look to hit us on the counter-attack, look to use the pace of Son in behind and possibly Lucas Moura if he's available. Um, 
you know, that that's what you expect from not just Tottenham over the last few years, but from a Nuno Espirito Santo side. That's the way they play. And I think the fact that they're lacking in a bit of confidence at the moment will will add to that and will make it more likely that they take that approach. So, um, yeah, I'm not expecting them to come out and, and really take the game to us. But if Arsenal are going to be the ones creating the play and, and, and trying to take the game to their opponents, we still need to be careful and mindful of what Tottenham have on the counter-attack. One of the things I will give Mikel Arteta credit for since he's taken over is that I feel Arsenal on the transition are a much better side. I think we've not completely eradicated those goals on the counter-attack, but we, we certainly concede less of them under his management. So I feel a little bit better about that. But it means Arsenal need to be patient. It means Arsenal need to stay in control. And it means Arsenal need to, to be mindful of the spaces that they vacate when they do bomb on forward. And I think the fact that Takahiro Tomiyasu is likely to play it right back and will tuck in alongside that back three probably nullifies that a little bit. And, and it helps that when Kieran Tierney goes on, we do have those players uh, to be able to backfill those gaps. So, yeah, I'm feeling confident about that. But, you know, it's as I said, they've got quality. And if you give them an inch, that they, they can quite often take a mile. So, Fingers crossed that we get the game plan right, we get the team selection right and uh, we can create a great atmosphere inside the Emirates to really uh, get behind the team, help the team and be, as they say, that 12th man. So uh, really looking forward to it. In terms of a prediction, I'm going to go with the famous old 1-0 to the Arsenal. Now, I know Harry Kane normally scores against us and I wouldn't put it past him doing it again, but my gut is telling me now uh, it's going to be the famous old 1-0 to the Arsenal. And what would that do for Arsenal and what would that do for Mikel Arteta? Well, it would buy him a lot of goodwill. And, and it's goodwill that, to be honest, he needs at the moment, doesn't he? Because he's been under pressure from the start of the season. He's been under pressure from last season, if we're being completely honest. And um, I just think getting onto that nine-point mark and doing it by beating Tottenham Hotspur would, would really kind of give him just that little bit of breathing space he needs so that he can continue with the job and not be kind of too swayed one way or the other by the pressure that is on him you've got to take into consideration I mean we've been looking ahead at this fixture for weeks now but beyond this fixture we go away to Brighton before the international break and that's a really difficult game Graham Potter's got him playing some really really good stuff and if you were to win the North London derby and then go and pick up a point at Brighton which would be very respectable right now given where we are given where they are you'd say that that was okay if we win the North London derby. But of course, losing the North London derby not only means that the, the knives will be out for Mikel Arteta, but it means there's less uh, margin for error going into that game against Brighton as well. So if Mikel can win this, I think it will it'll really give him a boost. It will give the club a boost. It will give the players a massive boost, the fans a massive boost. And, uh, and then hopefully we can kind of start to move away from this toxicity and negativity that is around the football club at the moment because... It's been really, really draining. So that's my prediction. 1-0 to the Arsenal. And uh, look forward to seeing how it pans out. Don't forget to hit the like button. Subscribe to the channel if you're new. And we'll be back very, very soon with more Arsenal and North London Derby content. Until then, take care.